What's poppin' ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Just Jay Sama, uh, host of the most consistently inconsistent entertainment critiquing podcast, or I guess an inter- entertainment commentary podcast, uh, on, on the web. So, um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, we're just gonna jump into it. I had the opportunity to talk about a bunch of stuff this week, um, and I've been trying to catch up on the actual, like, workload that I've had with, you know getting the channel and the podcast going and stuff, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, today today was not an easy day for me. Um, I actually felt uh, horrible. Today was a horrible, horrible, horrible day. Uh, not because of anything in particular that happened to me, but today was a particularly tough day, I think, in America for black people. And uh, I just, I don't know, I've never... I've never really felt like if you guys follow me on Twitter, you would have seen a little bit of my rant today regarding the, uh, I guess, not indicting the officers that murdered Breonna Taylor. Um, now, there's been times where I've been very vocal about my my position and my beliefs, but today's was just different. Today's just hit me uh, a, a lot harder than any of the previous I guess, killing of unarmed black people. This has just been the toughest one because there's... Okay, starting from the top, I already don't feel safe. I don't feel safe in this country. I don't feel like I'm wanted here. I don't feel like, you know, there not necessarily aren't opportunities, but this is just the way I've grown up, seeing things happen, seeing... The way the country and the police and justice system treat black people, not just black people, but black and brown people, but I'm talking about black people specifically today, is just, it's just appalling, man. It's just really, really appalling. It's almost like, like they just really don't care and try to do backflips and look for excuses and stuff for why it's okay to treat black people badly, at least in the whole governmental, government system. And Honestly, I'm not an expert on anything. I've only done a teeny tiny bit of research on the grand scale that is social justice and everything else that comes with that. But watching all of this stuff happen, man, and it just it doesn't it doesn't feel right. It I've experienced my fair share of what I believe to be is definitely racism and just prejudice and all types of stuff. I grew up in L.A., so it's it's a little different here. A lot of stuff is just fucked up anyway, but I just really think this is this is tough, man. This is this is a tough thing to deal with today. Um, I I don't see how in a profession, and I was talking about this on Twitter. I don't see how in a profession, in a professional environment, you have a job, you make a mistake, you do something wrong, your you, there are consequences for it. Yet here we are. Once again, seeing another set of police officers get away with murder, and it's just crazy. I, I mean, even under normal circumstances, I say normal because it is normal. Under usual circumstances, it's the officer feared for their life, they were threatened, uh, it appeared that they had a gun, and it's just like, yo, this the wildest situation. This girl was in her house sleeping and i i that really just made me think like yo are we really not safe anywhere like i i want i i've held back like crying multiple times today because even though yeah i didn't know this girl i didn't know anybody who knew this girl i knew this situation and i've seen it before i've seen it time and time again and it's just i already don't i try not to talk about this kind of stuff on the podcast i try not to talk about this stuff except for on live streams every now and then because i'll see something that's unfair but i just i don't even have words for it i'm not shocked i'm not surprised i'm just disappointed and i'm tired i'm tired of seeing the same thing over and over and over again i'm tired of seeing oh well you know there's the police officers did what they it's just like yo you would think that honestly in this day and age, police officers would move a little differently based off of previous officers' fuck-ups. You know what I mean? Like, it only takes a few times to see a couple of cops kill some innocent black people, and you're like, you know what? Maybe, regardless of where you are in America, 
it's like maybe we should approach black people a little differently. You would think like people would learn. You would think officers would learn like, oh, okay, I don't want to be one of the ones that's on camera or anything like that. But I, I just, I find it so difficult to even like, it's odd to say this, but even trust white people, man. Like it's just all this year, I'm just seeing cops being called on black people for no reason. White people getting upset and getting their way because, you know, some black people did them dirty or it's just all sorts of shit. White people are uncomfortable. Uh, they, these people were looking suspicious. Uh, this person was in this house and I don't know them. Or uh, this person doesn't live in this building. All sorts of bullshit. Not just this year, but every year since ever. Forever. Okay. And it's just, it, it's just bullshit man i'm tired of hearing about it i'm i wish i had a solution i honestly wish i had a fucking solution i'm kind of just venting on today's podcast uh i wish i had some sort of explanation as to why this happens i wish i had some sort of like hey this is how we fix it or something but it's it's tough man and i and i only say that america doesn't care about black people because it's it's evidently true Actions speak louder than words, you know. Uh, <laughs> deeds, deeds. It, uh, what is it? Uh, you express more through deeds and acts than lip service. I think it, it, it's just everything that anybody ever says about police brutality or anything like that is just not even. It's not even close to what it actually is. Even as I sit here and describe to you what the feeling is like to be uncomfortable in just in my regular skin coming home and realizing that at any moment any time this door there could you know and it's just like you look like somebody that we were looking for it's like bro i'm in my own fucking house you know what i mean like and you don't even have to do anything to be guilty until proven innocent in this country at least if you're black like if you're I'm sorry to say this well actually no i'm not cuz this is this is the evident fucking truth like we watched fucking all of this shit all of these mass murderers that are white just get taken in with just get taken into custody no gunfire no nothing like none of the theatrics black people get yet multiple times this year last year the year before that the year before that the year before that just going back as longer than i've even been alive just get treated with blatant disrespect and hostility first i really think after paying attention to a lot of the stuff that goes on in this country i don't think it's that we just need police reform i think we need a whole not even systematic reform we just need a whole overall a whole change everything because this country was not built in the service in in the service for black people it's was because of the service of black people if that makes any sense I don't even feel like I'm saying that right. Basically, I'm saying this country was built by black people that were brought over here. And they didn't volunteer. That's that's the thing. We didn't volunteer to be here. You know, it's not, it's not like anybody was just like, okay, we'll go. Like, that's not, that's not the case. Like, that's not how this country started. And it just seems it's, it's fucked up to think that my father and my grandfather, and my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather all had very similar perspectives on what this country has to offer people that look like us it's dangerous to be people that look like us and it's hard to see that not even the country that has us here that brought us here does not give a fuck about us and i explain it to a lot of people this way and this gets into like the whole rant of systemic racism and stuff but i'm trying to keep today's episode short because i just don't have the energy to try to articulate properly what it is that i'm trying to say and it's all stems stems from systemic racism okay that's just you, we bring you over here we bring you niggas over here you build up the country and then this guy in office he lets you go but we're still going to keep you as slaves for a couple more years um and then by the time we do that well guess what you don't have no no established credit by that time you don't have no money no nothing to your name and we will just want you to just just populate you niggas just populate we don't we don't care and then we're gonna at every single turn we're gonna deter you from going to school we're gonna deter you from going to college we're gonna deter you from voting all of these things against black people and this is all stuff before i was even fucking alive before i was even fucking thought of okay this is how this country was fucking founded so everybody gets a boat right everybody gets a fucking boat i 
I shit you not, this is the scenario for every single race in America. Everybody gets a boat. Some boats are a little bit more rickety. The white people got a nice, ooh, pristine boat. Great. It's all fresh from England, Scotland, some of the finest wood that you can find overseas. Black people get that bullshit. Black people get the shit that, oh, you just scraped that off the tree. That, that fucking first layer of bark. That's what we got for our boat. Not only do we have that for our boat, but our boat has holes in it. And we're expected to race alongside everybody else on, in America. Like, first to defeat capitalism. Go, 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 go. Our boat wasn't even fucking built right. And we're supposed to feel like we're equal to everybody else. We didn't start at the same place. Everybody else started up here. Even, even the immigrants that migrate to this country, bro, you're not looked at the same way that we are. You're absolutely not. And I can hear it now. Like There's, there's all sorts of cynics and, and people trying to make exceptions for this, that, and the other thing. But here's the thing. You don't live the reality that I live. You really fucking don't. I always find it that it's a lot of like international people that that want to comment and shit. And of course, white people want to comment like, oh, well, you know, liberty and justice for all and equality and blah, 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 blah. But it does not. The country does not reciprocate that. It does not show that with action. It, the actions that it shows are fuck you. OK, that's 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 just what it is. And it's difficult to be okay and complacent with the way things are when i know at any moment because of no fault of my own somebody could take my life and get away with it that's that's such a fucking tough reality to live with and i'm i'm even scared for both my kids my grandkids everybody else's kids because at any moment any time it could be over for you and it's tough whenever you see the red and blues behind you bro i swear to god even driving on my way to work and from home from work today there was a few times where even when cops are changing lanes and they're behind me, I get fucking nervous. I, I turn the music down. I roll all my windows down. Like that is the type of fucking anxiety that you have to live with on a daily basis. Even if you're just walking down the fucking street, you could look suspicious. Like because of your skin tone. Okay. And it's also tough because yeah sure i'll give you the the white devil's advocate i'll give you the benefit of the doubt say yes there is somebody that looks like me that committed a crime nearby guess what we're in a tough situation to where we don't have the same economic advantages as other races of people because we started our boat with holes in it so we didn't have the same opportunities even growing up it, like even if I were to have kids now, they're not having the same opportunities that I had. They may have more, but my grandfather wouldn't see it that way. It's like, because guess what? To the eyes of, of the whites, you still a nigga. Sorry, you still a nigga. You, when you go into a store, we still follow you. We still pay attention to you. No matter how many generations go by, it just, it is what it is. And so with that being said, I, I had like a lot more stuff I wanted to get out, but I, I feel like I've made my point. It's, it's real tough. And I wanted to talk a little bit about... You know what? Fuck it. We'll, we'll, ex we'll extend a few more minutes, okay? I wanted to talk about this aspect of um, people trying to um, demoralize or I guess demonize looting or I guess uh, people who don't understand the whole purpose of looting. So when you have a situation like this where Breonna Taylor is killed, months and months later, her, her murderers are not indicted. They... Get no pensions cut, no type of repercussions or consequences whatsoever. In a circumstance like that, it's up to the people in power to make changes and make adjustments. So somebody like myself could not necessarily do that. My next door neighbor, the people upstairs, the people next, you know, my, my other neighbors. Individually, we cannot make a huge, huge difference. Yes, there's the concept of voting and paying attention to the policies and the people that we vote in and our general, uh, our, you know, attorney generals and people on the school board and our police chiefs and stuff like that. All of this stuff is, is within manageable range. But when it comes to the giant tycoon companies, which is why I tried to explain this to a lot of people that this is what the looting is for. This is looting is for getting the attention of these giant companies that do have influence over things in Washington. OK, L let me tell you right now, if if Apple were to decide it, let's not use Apple. Let's use Jeff Bezos, Amazon. OK, obviously one of the 
biggest fucking companies that does reside here in America. If Jeff Bezos decided to go to Washington, D.C. and say, hey, you know what? I want to fight for my black and brown brothers against uh, police brutality in this country. This man carries so much weight in his fucking pockets. Somebody's going to fucking listen to him. That's the thing. So if, if it takes for Jeff Bezos to do that, in order to pre pressure Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or any of these huge tycoons of the of industries to have a to put their voice to use where legislation is made because they're the reason why a lot of legislation is made is it not big business does move so it's just it's just basic math so if we fuck up some shit at Amazon in the name of police brutality we're only doing this because we want to get attention to this specific thing yes there are always people who are just trying to get over on other people people who are just trying to steal just to steal some people who just want to break shit to break shit because at the end of the day when you protest so fucking much it only changes so many people it only changes so many things but until you start affecting people's wallets i don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of supply and demand but when you start affecting people's wallets then they start giving a shit so that's what i think I think looting is a perfectly good, reasonable thing to do. Maybe not some of the wild, wild shit that people be doing, just, just breaking into anything. But it's, it's stuff like Target and Walmart and Amazon and all of these huge mega corporations. They're the ones who, who can influence the decisions in Washington. They're the ones who can influence legislation. And that's the whole purpose of looting. So if you did not understand that, I'm sorry, but you need to pay the fuck attention. Rewind the tape if you fucking need to. But you get the attention of the bigwigs by affecting their wallets. That's just how it is. That's how you affect change. Somebody's wallet got to be affected because that seems to be the only fucking thing that we care about in this capitalistic country. Anyway, what the fuck do I know? I'm just a nigga with 7,000 subs. I fucking don't know shit. I'm not an expert on anything. I don't know shit about shit. This has been your man, Just Jay Samal. I will catch you guys next time. Make sure to keep it canon. Also, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Just Jay Sama. I'm going to be trying to put out uh, new content every single week. Uh, but this has just, just been hard lately, man. It's just been hard. Dealing with the pandemic and systematic racism. Oh, man, your boy is just... It's just fucked up. But I'll see you guys next time.